Edinburgh, overlooked by its romantic, craggy castle, was the city where Robert Burns, Scotland's national poet, enjoyed romantic liaisons with society ladies of the day in the second half of the 18th century. Edinburgh is still really popular with couples today, whether it be a stroll in Holyrood Park or maybe a proposal here in St Margaret's Chapel in the castle grounds. A growing proportion of these couples will have met through some kind of online dating service. A recent study by the National Academy of Sciences in the US found that around a third of people who married between 2005 and 2012 met their spouse online, up from just 19% five years earlier. Some 5.3 million Britons use internet dating sites, according to research by Comscore. Well, I've never done it because I met my husband in high school, <laughs> so I never had any need to do it. Hey, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if, you know. What? No, no, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, I don't think you can. I don't think love's um, judged by science or anything like that. You know. Um, I just think the stigma is kind of falling away. Like we have no shame about telling people we met online. That's how we fell in love. And so I think it, I think it's an amazing like vehicle to find somebody to find someone that'll match your heart. So it's perhaps fitting that Edinburgh is home to the UK's only stock market listed online dating services company Cupid, which runs a portfolio of dating sites. Online dating services are not without their sceptics. Earlier this year, Cupid was accused of creating fake profiles to lure customers to join. Although the company was cleared in an independent investigation, it has promised to increase transparency. But what is clear is that, behind the scenes, matching someone with their perfect partner is a matter of processing enormous amounts of information. Currently we have around half a million subscribers on our database who are people that are paying us in any month in time. Behind that, however, there's another around 20 million what we call active users. These are people who have logged into any of the websites within the last six months. Then these people may have up to, you know, 100 characteristics personally associated with them. So it's a vast number if you do that arithmetic, 20 million, 500,000 and a few hundred characteristics. Computer-aided dating goes back to the 1960s when you would put your dating preferences in on a punch card and an IBM computer would spit out a series of matches. Things have moved on considerably since then and now the latest trend is to link your online dating profile with your social media profile. And Cupid's site Canoodle is at the forefront of doing this. We're trying to find this, you know, chemistry uh, between them, trying to find this unique interest, which will actually will be common for them and will be the very good start point to start communication, relationship and everything else. Finding love is arguably one of the hardest things to reduce to a formula. But with vast stores of data and complex algorithms that allow them to be processed fast, online dating companies such as Cupid are getting close to turning it into a science. There are lessons for other organisations from the world of online dating uh, as it pertains to big data and probably the most fundamental is what do you want to use the data for? The online dating world uh, realised they had a massive amount of user data on their hands and used it very cleverly to create a subscription business model that makes money for those organisations. Uh, we observe a lot of companies who collect a huge amount of data, who integrate third-party data streams, but don't yet know what the purpose of it is, and therefore it's just a cost rather than what the dating organisations have managed to do, which is turn it into a revenue stream. Other sectors should take note. Using these same techniques, getting a consumer to fall in love with a brand or a product should be much easier. Maya Palmer, Financial Times, in Edinburgh.